Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970s Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Minnesota Twins and the Seattle Pilots at Brainiac Stadium. On the mound for the Twins today is Dean Chance, whose record is 4-3 with a 4.05 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Camilo Pascual whose record is 0-1 with a 6.57 ERA. Okay, today is the giveaway day for our channel here. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, we will be giving away during the seventh inning stretch today uh, this 1969 Seattle Pilots official scorebook from Six Stadium circa 1969 in the year of our Lord. Uh, you can see it's not in very good condition. Uh, this is the, the photo that was given to me when I purchased it on Mercari. I have yet to actually receive this item. I do expect it here tomorrow, which is Monday, um, with the holiday weekend. Uh, I guess it's running a little bit late. Um, so I haven't actually uh, put my own eyeballs on it. Uh, but it's a really rare piece of memorabilia, something that I think is a really cool giveaway. Regardless of the condition, I don't know what the insides look like, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And the winner today uh, will get this specific prize. Uh, for the winner, whomever that is, uh, please give your uh, email, or I'm sorry, my email will be in the uh, comments below. And then uh, you can email me and uh, with your address and i will get it out as soon as i can now we will be doing the duck race today and as you can see we have our 10 contestants here this is how we will determine the winner of the uh scorebook so when the time comes during the seventh stretch we will shuffle these characters once we'll go to the super full screen and we'll have a minute and 45 seconds to determine the winner uh so that should be a lot of fun so uh we will return to the duck race a little later on in the day let's go ahead and get started with today's ball game as always i appreciate everyone following along like and or subscribe to the channel uh, you must be a subscriber in order to get in uh, the contests uh, so hit that like button and give me a subscriber I, I appreciate that now over the last couple of days we've had a little bit of problem with some static feedback I don't know what has caused that. I've disconnected um, all my components and reconnected them. So hopefully we won't have any feedback today. I've also moved my phone far away from the laptop. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is that perhaps my headset is going bad. And if it is, I apologize. I will replace it if that is the case today. So we've got newly acquired Camilo Pasqual uh, pitching today. His first appearance as a starter did not go so well for us. It looks like he has had some success against his old teammates. Uh, they, they're only batting 183 against him. The bullpen is all available today, with the exception of Miguel Fuentes, who is still three days out uh, from being healthy. And look at that. His um, ratings have gone up to 80 now. They went from 74 to 79, and now they've popped up to 80. And that makes me think that all the other guys are going down, <laughs> which is not great. But we are who we are, right? Let's take a look at our uh, lineup for today. Dean Chance is a right-hander. So we have our lineup in there versus righties. We're going to get Bill Robinson a day off. I kind of feel like he's fallen off a little bit. He is still among the league leaders in home runs and RBI. But what we're going to do is shuffle things around a little bit. Joe Pepitone will go to left field. Mike Keegan will get his fourth start in right field. We got uh, also newly acquired Manny Sandian behind the plate today. Let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Minnesota Twins. Batting leadoff, playing first base is Rod Carew. Batting second in center field is Ted Ulander. Batting third in right field is Tony Oliva. Batting cleanup in left field is Charlie Manuel. Batting 5th at 3rd base is Greg Nettles. Batting 6th at shortstop is Rick Rennick. Batting 7th at catching is John Roseboro. Batting 8th at 2nd base is Frank Quilisi. 
And batting ninth is the pitcher, Dean Chance. Okay, let's take a look here at uh, Camilo Pasquale. As you can see, he's making a second start in a Pilots uniform. He's made three combined with the Sens. Uh, he went three and a third, gave up six runs on six hits, four walks. An incredibly disappointing performance. I really had a good feeling about him uh, getting traded over here that we would be able to utilize him in a method where we could uh, bolster our rotation and maybe solidify uh, one more spot uh, in our bullpen one way or another. But it didn't work out for us. You can see he's got an 89 mile an hour fastball. Ground ball percentage is right around 47%. The only good pitch left in his arsenal is the curveball. His rating has dropped down to a 74. The 36-year-old righty is not a free agent until next year, so we've got him on the hook for one more year after this one, which is fine because we've probably got at least two more years before last year's draftees, uh, Dennis Leonard and Dick Ruthven, uh, can make it to the majors. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Let's take a look at the defense for the Pilots. Uh, we look solid everywhere. Finally, we have everyone above league average uh, defensively at every position. And Rod Carew will lead it off versus Camilo Pasqual. Here we go. 1-1 one, one count to Carew. And Carew, it's a ground ball to second. Place made by Van Kelly. There is one down. Next man up is Ted Ulander. He's got three home runs this year against the Pilots as he hits a grounder to second. I can hear a little bit of a delay in my headset. That's because we have that duck race uh, pending. So I apologize if it's um, if you can hear a delay. Two quick outs for Pasquale as Tony Oliva flies out to left center. And that will do it. So we go to the bottom of the first inning we'll take a look at the pilots lineup rundown i like the fact that we got our yellow uh, ha a helmet and uh, long sleeve shirts on with the duck race that feels appropriate batting leadoff at shortstop today is jerry devannon batting second in right field is mike hegan batting third in left field is joe pepitone Batting cleanup at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting sixth at second base is Van Kelly. Batting seventh at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting eighth is the catcher, Manny Seguin. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Pasquale. Okay, Dean Chance. We just saw him last week. Now he's making his 10th start. He's 4-3 and three with a 4.05 ERA. 63 strikeouts and 66 and two-third innings pitched. Opponents are betting 240 against him. He's got three complete games this year. Fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 36.7%. So he is a fly ball pitcher. He's only given up seven home runs. But I don't think he's pitched in our stadium yet, yet this year. So that's a good sign for us. Fastball tops, uh, I'm sorry, fastball is rated in 89. Curveball is rated in 81. Overall rated in 88, the 28-year-old right-hander is a free agent at the end of the year. And I love the fact that he's got 63 strikeouts in 66 and two-third innings pitched. So that's almost a strikeout per inning, obviously. We'll take a look at his log. Uh, yeah, against the Pilots, he got his second win of the year. It was a complete game. He went nine innings, giving up two runs on seven hits, walking one, striking out five. And that was... Uh, at home for us? No, at home for them in Minnesota. Okay. Let's take a look at their defense. It's spotty at best. Shortstop uh, below league average. That's uh, Rennick getting a start today. And then in center field, we have Ulander. Right field is Tony Oliva. That's correct. Okay. Behind the plate is Rose Boyle. We know he's got a decent arm, although we have had a, a lot of success against him this year. Okay, Jerry Devanin leading off versus Dean Chance. Devanin with a, a line drive to center field. There's one out. Now, with yesterday's game being a shutout victory, 
I always kind of wonder if the game will tip the scales back in the other direction um, and maybe cause us to have a shutout today. Dean Chance is probably the guy to do it. Two quick outs for Dean Chance. Full count to Pepitone, and Pepitone will walk. So we have a runner on first. Here's Darren Johnson, batting 297, seven home runs, 20 RBI. He goes oppo into the gap in right center field. It will be caught for out number three. So we strand the runner, go to the top of the second, and Charlie Manuel will lead it off. Manuel, 0-1 count, and he pulls it into right field for a base hit. That is the first hit of the ball game. Here is Greg Nettles. Nettles batting 163 with four home runs. Love to get a double play here. Hard hit ground ball to second. Can we turn two? Yes, we do. With Pasquale covering first, a 4-6-1 double play. And that'll bring up the backup shortstop, Rick Rennick, who Pasquale walks. First base on ball issued by Pasquale. So runner on first now for John Roseboro. And he's going to get a base hit. Oh, oh no, it's going to be caught! I thought that was going to get past the right fielder. Uh, Hegan, who doesn't really play right field much. Instead, he makes a good grab, and we go to the bottom of the second. Tommy Ag, he's been struggling of late, but he gets a base hit to right field. What is the stolen base percentage? 73%. I mean, runs are going to be hard to come by today with the ace on the mound. Uh, but Van Kelly's hitting really well lately. So let's see if Van Kelly can find a way to get on base. All on his own. No, it's a fly ball into shallow center field. It will be caught by the second baseman, Qualisi. So now we will attempt to steal second. AG, I believe he's 10 for 15 this year. Low, and he does steal second base. Number 11. Yeah, that's right, 11 for 16 now. Keeping the pressure on, runner on second with Rich Rollins up. 2-1 count. And Rollins pulls it right at the third baseman. AG gets back in time. Nettles, who made a costly error yesterday, snares the line drive for out number two. And our catcher, Sanguian, got his first start yesterday, had a base hit and an RBI. Flies out to center for out number three. We have just not been clutch lately. It's very frustrating as Qualisi will lead it off here in the top of the third. And the leadoff man is on with the base hit to right. All right, so we know we got to pull the corners in. This will be a successful sacrifice, and then they'll score on a hit by Carew. We already know how this goes down. 2-2 Two -two to Carew. Oh, Carew's going to strike out looking. Ulander's been a thorn in our th side. There's a part of me that just wants to walk him, but what to get to the Hall of Famer Oliva? I, I guess not. So we're going to go after Ulander here. He's got an 0-1 count, and he slices it to left. It will be caught. And there's out number three, so we get out of another jam. Pasquale looking much better as he steps into the box for the first time. He's 0-3 on the season. And he takes strike three. And heads back to the bench. Rolling it over to the top of the lineup with Devannon with a ground ball. Three total hits between the two teams. Keegan gets all of it. A home run to right center field, 374 feet. That is Higgins' ninth home run of the year. 
after hitting a total of 13 last year. He's loving hitting at home. I wonder. Yeah, let's see his splits. He's got seven home runs. Oh, this is not home or away. It's righty lefty. That's not going to help us. I was wondering how many he had at home, but maybe there's just no way to know that. I, I don't know. Okay, so one nothing Seattle. Here's Joey Pep. Ground ball into the hole at short, and Rennick ranges over and makes the play. We do get on the board with our second hit. It was the home run by Hegan. It's one nothing. Here's Tony Oliva and another leadoff single. That's going to be a double, actually. So that's three innings in a row the leadoff man has got on board. Eighth double by Tony Oliva. Real count to manual. I don't hate that. Um, I don't hate that. I, I, we can get a double play here, perhaps, and then face Rennick and get the out. Nettles is already grounded into a double play today. Can we get another? Yes. Rollins, let's go around the horn. Yes. Good, good job. Pasquale is causing his own problems, but getting out of it. Potentially here. Rick Reddick's two for nine on the season. One one count and a home run. So wouldn't you know it? The guy who never plays hits a two run home run. And it's two to one Minnesota. Roseboro grounds out. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Well, at least it's a competitive game, right? We'll take that. Darren Johnson leading off the bottom of the fourth, popping it up into foul ground. Roseboro will make the catch. Next man up is AG. He's got one of the two hits. Grounding out to third, and Van Kelly. He gets a hit when we don't need him to. Where was that after AG had stole second? Uh, two down, Rich Rollins. Strikes out. That's only the second strikeout for Dean Chance. We're moving on to the top of the fifth. Pasquale only at 53 pitches. Even though he's given up a home run, he's pitched pretty good today. I'm pleased. Quilisi will fly out to center. One out, and the pitcher Chance is up. Chance popping it up at home play. Sanguian making a call for it. He does make the catch. And we're back to all the lefties. Rod Carew with a ground ball to second. Rod Carew does not seem like Rod Carew in this game. Betting 268, he never had much power. But as a leadoff hitter and a Hall of Famer, just really not getting it done. Okay, so we have Pasquale up next and all these lefties, so he might be done for today. Let's see what Seguin does. Okay, base hit, absolutely coming out of the ballgame. Runner on first. Jesus Alou will come up. Now, he's been terrible. He's been terrible. He's one for 14 since we picked him off the free agent heap. Um, but he can hit and run. And that's exactly what we want him to do. The old hit and run. There we go. First pitch swinging. And a base hit into center field. Seguin holds it second. Very convenient. Let's see if JD can drop it down. Drop it like it's hot. He's just a slightly above average bunter. Oh no. Okay, gets it down to first. And everybody advances. Good job by Devanin. 
Now we are going to go on contact. Wait, Dean Chance is a fly ball pitcher, right? You said that. Yeah. So do we go for a sack fly instead? I don't know what to do here. Uh, my gut is telling me going on contact is a better way to go. So on a ground ball, St. Guillen should score. 2-2 two -two count. It uh, doesn't matter. Oh, it's going to be a comebacker. St. Guillen scores. All right. I picked the lesser of two evils, and it worked out for us. As the game is tied, give Hegan a ribby. And Joey Pep pulls it into right field for a base hit. So finally, we are doing some damage against Dean Chance. This pitch count is up to 72 pitches. And a 2-2 two -two count to Darren Johnson, a ground ball to short. And that'll do it. Okay, great job by Jesus Alou. We're taking him out. And we're going to bring in J-Mo. Morris has not given up a run this year. And that means he is due. He does walk too many batters. So I guess it's safe to say we could expect him to at least walk one this inning. Will it be Ted Ulander who hits lefties well for a lefty? 0-2 count. Now, oh, line drive to left. Pepitone making the catch. We basically have first baseman in left field and right field. And we have a terrible center fielder, Tommy Agee. So, <laughs> I don't know how we're getting it done. This is not the optimal lineup defensively. Lefty on lefty. Oliva popping it up right in front of the mound. Oh, Sanguian makes the catch. I'd say 50-50, that's an error. Okay, two down. Can we get a 1-2-3 inning from J-Mo? Oh, he strikes him out, so he does not walk anybody. Good job. We're going to the bottom of the six. Don't forget, next inning, we are giving away the 1969 Seattle Pilots. Scorebook from Six Stadium. Stay tuned for that. AG leading it off with a pop-up. This is a good game for the giveaway. I feel like if we're going to give something away, and maybe it's likely more people will watch this video, we want it to be a good game at least. As Van Kelly gets an infield single to first. Seven hits now for the Pilots and a great opportunity to hit and run. Run around first, less than two out. Good contact hitter. Oh, no. Oh, a stolen base by Kelly as Rollins doesn't even offer a swing at it. Maybe he missed the sign. I don't know. I mean, you got to throw the bat down, don't you? You hug him out to dry. Second stolen base for Kelly. We'll take it. Nope. The hit and run is off, clearly. We'll just swing away. Uh, one, two count. Uh, Tapper, is that going to get Kelly a third? Oh, no, Kelly's not even going to go. All right, well, that's, that's fine. So we keep the go-ahead run at second for Manny Sanguian. We need something big here, though, please. Nope, fly ball to the left. Okay, we're moving on to the top of the seventh inning. Morris will stay in the ball game. Face Greg Nettles. Oh, you son of a bitch. All right. J Mo coming out. In come Diego Segape. We're going with the ready ready matchup. Now, Sagi has been bad. Bad, bad, bad. And Rick Rennick's already got a two run home run. Strikes out Rennick.
All right, we're taking him out. We're bringing in Ron Locke. Lefty on lefty. We'd love to get a double play. What is his uh, ground ball percentage? 48%, so nearly half the time. Let's get a ground ball and get out of this. Here we go, John Roseboro. 0 for 10 in his career versus Ron Locke. I didn't know that when I put him in there. Just felt right. Yes, there we go. Now we'll guard the lines. We don't want Nettles to score from first on a shot down the line. Colisi does get extra base hits. We'll let Ro uh, Locke face him. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay, a fly ball to left field. That should do it. We'll move on to the giveaway. I'm excited. All right. There's the prize. As a reminder, take a good long gander at it. It's going to be in one of your homes next. And we are going to super full screen this. And we are going to shuffle the characters one time. Because this is in the order of, of which... Um, uh, you uh, signed up for this giveaway. So we're going to shuffle it right now and it, it'll change your, your uh, costumes and your location. And then we'll run down the characters. I mean, the contestants. My bad. You guys are characters, though. Okay, let's run it down here. We have 10 contestants at the top. We got Ethan P. in the Dick Cheney duck. I think that's what that is. James K, he's got the uh, Star Duck. John M, I think he is a seahorse, perhaps. David, not your status quo, is the Gladiator Duck. Uh, Lance B, he's wearing a little beanie there. Julio L, he's Superman Duck. I think Julio's going to be very pleased with that duck. Uh, Thomas D is the Bandit, I believe. Um, who is this? Is this Freddy? No, it's not Freddy C. This is George C. Uh, he's a duck that's got some hearts all over it. And then we have Jimmy DeBaker down here. He is a doctor duck. And finally, down here at the bottom is Freddy C. He is a chef looking to cook up a victory here. So we've got a minute 45 on the clock. I believe that's what we went with last time. And good luck to all the contestants. I think we're going to count down from three. We'll hit the start button and get this going. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Quack, quack. Okay. Uh, yes, it's running slow, but that's because my laptop sucks. We got Ethan P out in front early on. Now, we find usually that the early leaders usually come back to the pack. Freddie C... Maybe he is ahead by a beak, by the bill, I guess, down there at the bottom. Uh, Julio L in third place. We've got George C bringing up the rear. I think he's just waiting for his moment with a minute and 10 seconds coming up right now. Um, it's looking pretty solid, though, for Ethan P and Freddie C. Thomas D making a little run to the front with Lance B. John M biding his time. James K. Floating along, David, not your status quo. Slowly moving up. Okay, the ducks are in the front are coming back to the pack. Lance B coming up on 45 seconds is making a little bit of a run. It's Bill the Bill with Freddie C and Lance B. John M finally making a little bit of a move. Jimmy the Baker very quietly cruising along near the bottom. 30 seconds to go. Who's it going to be? I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, we got Freddie C. I, mean, I can't believe he's been there the whole time. That feels like a little bit of a deke. Oh, here we go. The time to make the move. Thomas D moving up. It's going to be Thomas D and Freddie C. Ethan P coming up on the outside nine. Eight seconds to go. Is Ethan P going to come out of nowhere? It looks like he might. Oh, he's got the lead. It's going to be Ethan P. Followed by Jimmy the Baker and George C finished third. Freddie, who was there almost all the way, he burned up his uh, all of his energy early on. Lance B finishing in tenth place. So Ethan P 
Congratulations, buddy, on your victory. Uh, my uh, email is in the description below. Uh, please contact me as soon as you can with uh, your address, and I will get it out as soon as the prize arrives. So, once again, Ethan P., Jimmy DeBaker, George C. Now, we do a giveaway four times during the season, usually every 40 games, like every quarter, right, obviously. So, uh, the next giveaway will be uh, at Game 80 coming up. And the prize is, I've already got the prize. It is a very rare, no, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. It is a very sought-after baseball card from 1972, kind of in the same vein as the Paul Gibson crotch grab card that we gave away uh, for the first prize from the 1984 season. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, now we've got a game to finish out here. Uh, hopefully all of you stuck around. If you didn't, that's okay, too. I get it. I get it. All right, so we're not going to have lock bat. Um, I guess this is where we pinch hit Bill Robinson. Be silly to keep that bat on the bench. 1-1 one, one count from Dean Chance. Get some good wood on it. 340 feet to center field, but... Not good enough. There's one out. We'll take a look at the in-game stats, too, by the way. There you go. Here's Devannon. 0 for 2 today. And a sacrifice bunt. Oh, he shoots it to right. Is that going to get to the wall? Yeah, it's going to be caught at the wall. Fine defensive play from Tony Oliva. Two down as Dean Chance is now at 100 pitches. And that's it. He walks Hegan. And they're going to yank him for Ron Peronsky. Peronsky. Per, Peron. Peronos, Peronosky. I, I know how to say that name. I don't know why I'm struggling with it. This guy. All right, so this is uh, his ninth game of the year. He's 2-0. He has yet to give up a run. 071 batting average. He's a junk ball pitcher. He's got a fastball, but you can't even really rate it. And he's a left-hander. Oh, man. Okay. So, we did pinch hit Robinson. So, if we pinch hit Pepitone, who doesn't have a hit, we can move Robinson. We can we can move around our, our outfield. That's what I'm getting at here. And we can bring in Gary Sutherland, who absolutely clubs lefties like a baby seal. Look at what he's doing versus lefties. He's batting 4-11. Okay, Hegan on first. Here we go, Gary Sutherland. Oh, we sh that's a weak sauce. Oh, it's an error! Oh, and they're going to take another pitcher out. <coughs> wow, I, they're really trying to make this happen. So Peronsky tosses the ball away. Sutherland on second, Hegan on first, and Dick Raditz will come into the ballgame. I need a little drink of water here. All right. Let's take a look at Dick Raditz. Tigers pitcher at one point. I guess that would have been in 68. That's a 69 card. So he must have been part of the World Series team. Okay. Two out. Runner on second and third. They're bringing in a right-hander to face Darren Johnson, who does have some success versus righties this year. Oh, they're going to intentionally walk him. That is a good move. To get to Tommy Agee, who's basically the same uh, stats versus righties, but definitely more of a strikeout potential. 1-0 count. Oh, no! Did he get all of it? A grand salami to dead center field, 468 feet. That is Agee's second grand slam this season, right? Yes, he has three career grand slams now. And that's his second in like a week. His RBI total is up to 23. And the Pilots take a commanding lead. Uh, those runs are all unearned, though. So it won't hurt the uh, pitchers. Van Kelly keeps it going. 
Wow, the, his weakest pitch, all fastballs. Oh, no, that was Peronsky. All right, well, that'll do it. Yeah, we're going to we gotta fix our defense here. Okay, so we're going to put Robinson in right, Keegan in left, and Gary Sutherland will come out of the game. We will replace him with a pitcher here in the eighth inning. And we will bring in Riddleberger because the lefties are coming up. In fact, we might even... Let's see. Oh, he's going to face Killebrew. Yeah, potentially if Riddleberger can run six outs, he can uh, get the save here. Oh, no, it's a 6-2 ball game, so no save. Okay, never mind. Oops. That would have been funny if I had Gary Sutherland pitch. All right, here we go. There's our defense. Actually, it's a little bit worse. Oh, you know what else we'll do? We'll take out Rollins and bring in Aurelio Rodriguez to play third. There we go. Now I feel a little bit better. Harvard Killebrew leading off. I guess Daddy Riddleberger. Look out. He will. Oh, he hits him. Oh, no. All right. Let's get a double play. The killer can't run. It's amazing he gets away with all that stuff. And a walk. He didn't need to run. Line drive to center. Killebrew will not tag. Tony Oliva, this worries me. Yep, that'll get a run in. That might be the junk run. Hey, and there's the double play. All right, so they got their junk run, whatever. Tom Hall coming in. He's done well, 24 strikeouts in 19 and two-third innings pitched. And Sandian, where did he go? Ground ball to first. Here's Bill Robb. Popping it up. Two outs for Jerry Davonen, and he takes a walk. Keegan does not hit lefties. Well, he's, he's doing all right this year, 235. That's a big upgrade over last year. And a base hit to center field. Davonen on to third. Oh, the game did that on purpose <clears throat> to get us to the pitcher. What a bunch of bull crap. <clears throat> you know what? We're gonna we're gonna take him out. Oh, we've only got one bat on the bench, and that is the rimp. Well, okay, we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna bring him in anyway. He hasn't done well versus lefties, but if he can somehow manage to get a hit, then uh, it'll all be worth it. Oh, three one count. Oh, they walk him. All right, the rimp walks. Could we get our second grand salami of the ball game? It's Darren Johnson up. Has he ever had a grand salami? He has never had one yet. Let's see if he can get one here. Base is juiced. 1-0 count. Oh, he gets jammed inside. All right. Well... All we have left is Skippy and Gladden. 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 Not Dan Gladden. Here's Skip Lockwood. Um, all right. This is the best we have to offer. Greg Dettles leading it off. 1-1 one, one count. Oof. Popping it up to short. Devenin. Yes. If that would have been an error, we would have lost this ball game. Here's Rick Rennick. He's got a two-run home run today. Ground ball in the hole. Devannon once again making the play. We are down to the final out. It is John Roseboro. 
And another line drive to the shortstop to Vannon. The Pilots win 6-3, handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Okay, that was a fantastic victory as it's looking to see if there's any trade offers. There is a trade offer. It's the same one as yesterday that I said a no-go. It's not like they sweetened the pot. Now, that would save us some money. No, I think we're okay. All right, so no other trade offers. Let's look at the standings. I hope that uh, there's a National League for you. I hope that uh, there has been no static this game. I can't hear it on my end if there is. I won't know until we, until I do the editing. Um, we've won three in a row. That is good. We're 15 and 25. Still the worst record in the American League. Let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Brief. Royals beat the Orioles 7 to 5. Joe Foy led the Royals. He had four hits. He had a double in there, a couple ribbies. Ron Hunt had went two for three. All right. And then the Astros win to share first place with the Reds. Um, Steve Bailey pitched well. I don't know who that is. Uh, but if he squints a little bit more, he gets his eyebrows to touch. And then there's A.G. knocking in four with the grand slam. He'll be the player of the game today. Also, kudos to Pasquale for pitching decent. That gives me a little bit of hope. Uh, the Coos, Jerry Kuzman of the Mets. Out for almost a month. He's having a... A rough year, win-loss-wise, 3-7. and seven. He's got a decision in all 10 starts with a 3 ERA, but he's going to be gone for 27 days. Okay, let's pull up that box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I love giving away stuff. It makes me happy. Um, I appreciate everyone that uh, takes time to watch this goofball game. Uh, let's see here. We've already decided that Tommy Agee's home run, uh, which was the game-winning RBI, uh, that was the most crucial thing that happened. He also got a stolen base. He had a shoe and a shot today. And he had four RBI. I mean, come on. That's a great game for anybody. Oh, Pasquale does not get the win. That's right. We tied. But he pitched good enough to keep us in the ball game. That's all I want. Ron Locke does get the win. Great job by the bullpen. Redelberger had to give up a run. I mean, the game wasn't going to give him not, not give up a junk run. Dean Chance, hard luck loser. Um, Peronsky and Raditz, unearned runs, and that'll do it. Okay, guys, thank you so much, and we will be back tomorrow with Game 3 of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.